students welcome to our new lecture that is on the chapter that is on electric propulsion right until now we have seen about the basic components which are required for the electric propulsion the power that has to be taken from the battery and that needs to be supplied to our electric motor so we will have to keep an regulating system in between the battery and the motor so that the power can be controlled and the proper power can be supplied to our electric motor now let us see about the different types of the motor so let's start with the first motor that is a basic that is a dc motor first we will see about the basic principle of how a motor actually works right how the magnetic field is generated inside it and how the power is generated inside the motor so first this is a basic example of the dc motor right in which you will see how the dc motor works so basically when we put any current con carrying conductor material in between the two poles of the magnet the force will be generated this is a basic principle of our motor that we are going to see now in between our two poles of the magnet we have put one armature that armature will rotate and that will give us the required power at the right side we have provided a north pole and at the left side we have provided the south pole of the magnet this armature is connected with two brushes and that two brushes is directly connected with our battery so this is a brushed type of the dc motor now the brush has a fixed location right which is connected with our commutator and that commutator helps us by changing the poles of the armature during the rotation of the armature it is a very simple method how the armature actually rotates inside the dc motor and that rotation will be seen inside the principle of the dc motor and that will give us the indication how the rotation actually works so the actual rotation inside the dc motor works when the magnetic field is generated it is basically works on the flaming's left hand rule in which you can see the first finger is magnetic field second is direction of current and the third one is the output that is the mechanical force which is being generated now in this case what happens is that when the current is applied the magnetic field is generated inside our armature the left end of the armature is converted into the north pole and the right end of the armature is converted into the south pole so because of that because of the repelling effect of the magnets both the poles will try to move towards a clockwise direction so that the armature will rotate into the clockwise direction right depending on the fleming left hand rule you can see that at the left side upper part force is generated at the right side downward force is generated so because of that the rotation of the armature will happen now the rotation is happening because of the repellent force so if we assume that the armature is in the vertical position that you are seeing right now so at that vertical position the repelling motion or we can say the repelling force will weaken right and when the armature will try to go towards the other pole of the uh, magnet at that time what is happening is that you can see that commutator is rotating but brushes are at the fixed place so when the armature will rotate what will happen is that the commutator poles will be reversed right which means that the positive will become negative when it is rotating and the negative will become positive right by the reversal of the poles the armature that is being connected will have a different poles when they are rotating right when it will complete a half rotation the poles will be reversed of the armature which means that when the north pole was on the uh, left side that will become on the south pole that is on the right side which means the left part that came on the right side will become now south pole 
and the north pole which was previous there will become south pole and the south pole which was on the right side will become again the north pole on the left side so you can see that the poles will be reversed again after the half rotation repelling effect will be generated because of the pole reversal that is happening because of the commutator that we are using that is connected with our brush right so basic function of the commutator is to reverse the polarization inside our armature so that the rotations of the armature stay continuous also the armature will not only be a one ring there will be number of rings inside the armature which will continuously keep rotating and which will continuously face the repelling force from our magnets that we have connected that is can be connected called as a field inside our motor so this is simply how the armature or the motor inside the magnetic field rotates and it basically functions on the flamings left hand rule these are the different configurations that can be used in dc motor so it has basically four types that is separately excited series shunt and the fourth one is the cumulative compound in the first type that is separately excited you can see that the field and armature are kept in a separate circuit which means the armature is being separately excited to our uh, motor in that you can see one graph which shows you the torque versus speed diagram in that you can see torque and speed can be varied independently in case of the separately excited motor but for our vehicle we want an arrangement which will give us a proper distribution between torque and speed which means that when the torque is increased the speed will reduce and when the speed is increased the torque will reduce that is the requirement of our distribution of the power that is being generated from our dc motor that will be obtained by the help of the series type of the dc motor in the second figure that is the bottom side you can see in the series motor you can see that field and uh, armature both are connected with the same voltage source that gives us the proper distribution between the torque and speed in the graph also you can see that the torque and speed which gives you the dotted series graph that has been written in which you can see when the torque is increased the speed reduces the speed when increased the torque will reduce right this is a basic requirement of our electric motor this function in our petrol diesel engine vehicles is been operated by the help of our gearbox here the gearbox is not used so directly the electric motor will distribute our power in torque and speed according to our requirement right so this is a basic system the third one is the shunt system in you can see that parallel arrangement is been obtained in case of the armature and our field winding it has almost the same characteristic of the separately excited arrangement you can see in the graph of the torque versus speed that the speed and the armature are independent which means the torque and speed are independent to each other and the next one is the cumulative compound arrangement in the case of the cumulative compound arrangement you can see that the armature has a field winding and on the other field winding is connected so it is a combination of series plus shunt mechanism now it will give us the advantages of both the things but you can see the torque speed characteristics in which you can see that the torque is generated when the motor reaches to a certain speed after that we are receiving the torque also you can see that the variation in the torque speed is very much compared to our series dc motor so because of this disadvantages we are generally preferring to a series dc motor or we can say the series arrangement of the dc motor that is was the second type in our configuration 
In most of the electric propulsive vehicles, we will consider a series electric vehicle with the series DC motor. This is a basic configuration or basic circuit that you can see in which we have shown the power converter which is connected with our DC motors. Also DC motors are widely used in the vehicles with the help of the power converter that is DC chopper or we can say the DC to DC converter that we saw in the last lecture. Here it is a basic one quadrant DC chopper control configuration with our DC motor. You can see the diode and the symbol for the DC chopper has been shown on the left side of the top circuit part as well. That is the symbol for the DC chopper. The diode will be working as the rectifier which controls the current or voltage which has been supplied in the DC motor and the final armature and field which shows you the DC motor is been shown in this circuit. So in the lecture we saw about how the motor actually works, how the principle of the motor works. In the next lecture we will see how the DC motor can be controlled. Until then thank you so much.